All right, this is my wife's Colt Combat Commander, and it is rather nice. But this little duckbill semi beaver tail is quite annoying. It doesn't let you get your thumb high enough to uh, disengage the safety com comfortably. And if you install an extended thumb safety and use your thumb on top of it, as some people do, that little joint right there um, is kind of irritating. This Colt duckbill is not one of my favorite things. So I got this Wilson Combat quote drop-in extended beaver tail with a little speed hump on it. I guess that's what they call it. But it's not really a drop-in as most drop-in parts are. You have to fit them or have them fitted and I'm having some trouble. The instructions say to remove material at the bottom notch and I've tried removing some material very very carefully and I can't get it to move properly. It basically locks the trigger in position. So I'm going to still work on it a little bit and remove a little bit more material. So I'm going to remove some material from this surface right here primarily and try to keep this angle the same where it engages the trigger bow or the stirrup. The 1911 guys are probably cringing at my nomenclature. So I'm going to try that and then we'll see, fit it and see how it works. Okay, so I've taken a little bit off and it still did not work. So I need to take a little bit more off. Hopefully I don't ruin it. I think I figured out what's the deal here. And it helps to have the gun apart. Hopefully you can see this. But this, the thing that's moving is the back of the trigger bow. And that the other thing that's moving now is the little tab on the grip safety. And that little, there's a little metal uh, bearing surface on the inside of the frame that the grip safety has to move up behind in order to clear. As you can see when the grip safety is in position, or without your thumb on the grip safety, the trigger can't move backward. And then when you push it in, it moves up out of the way, it rides up that bearing surface, which also needs to have clearance. There we go, try that. And then the trigger can come back, see? So, my this is the stock safety that works properly. So, what's, what my problem is, is that the front, lower portion front of the Wilson doesn't have enough material removed, so it's actually it's binding up against that bearing surface. It has nothing to do with the, the relief cutout for the trigger bow or whatever. It's that it's not relieved enough on the front in order to allow it to pivot up. But I thought that was pretty cool. You can see the inner workings. And they should just tell you to take the sear out and you can hopefully see what's going on better. So that's the, tr the grip safety functioning and then when you move it out of the way it allows the trigger to come back engage the sear so let me put the other one in and show you what's happening so this is the Wilson one and it's it's the movement it's I thought it, that it was the the trigger bow that was preventing the movement of the grip safety up but it's actually that bearing surface it's not allow it's not allowing the that tab of the grip safety to move upward far enough. So I need to remove some from the front, some more material from the front and lower portion of this tab so that it can ride up far enough to clear the trigger bow. Uh, I may screw this up, but it's a cheap lesson in how this stuff works. I think it's pretty fascinating how the little parts are all interacted and everything. Mr. Browning was quite intelligent.
So I'm going to try to remove some more material and hopefully not bugger this up. Wish me luck. Alrighty, I think I'm getting there. It's starting to move a little bit higher on that bearing surface. I still need to get a little bit further up though. Still won't move up quite. It starts to bind as it's about halfway up against that bearing surface, so it still won't clear the trigger. So rather than move, remove a lot of material, it's obviously not traveling as far as it needs to. It's it's not a question of removing the bottom portion so that the trigger will clear. It's a question of removing some more from the front so that it will pivot fully against that bearing surface so that it, it's not binding against that metal surface. So a little bit more and we should be there. Hopefully it's, I didn't already remove too much from the, from the bottom and it will still function. <laughs> we'll see. We're almost there I think. You can see that the it's almost going up far enough to clear the trigger. It's still getting jammed up about three quarters of the way up. Well, I don't mean to celebrate prematurely, but I think we are there. We took a little bit more off the front, a very small amount off the front, and a very small amount off that bottom edge. And now it goes up. Let's see if I can get the light on it for you. It goes up smoothly. And there's no hint of it catching on the trigger. Where's that line? It's, there it goes. So when you compress, depress the grip safety, it goes up that far and then stops as it hits that bearing surface and it stays there. And the trigger seems to be able to move freely. And then with the grip safety um, not depressed, hopefully it will catch on that part of it where it's supposed to until you depress it. And we'll never know until we get the sear and the disconnector and everything back in there and see if it works with the spring tension on it. So let's try that. Well holy crap it appears to be working. I can't believe it. Well I think it's working. I'm actually quite surprised. <laughs> but it appears that everything is hunky-dory. Safety on. Grip safety off, nothing happens, trigger doesn't move, safety off, and the trigger with no grip safety doesn't move, grip safety depressed, let's check that one more time, grip safety depressed, Try safety off and the trigger, now hold the trigger down, and the disconnector works. It's working properly. Better do the old tried and true sear drop test to make sure the hammer doesn't fall once. That is working and I like the grip safety to look a lot better than the original duck bill. It kind of comes down and looks sort of depressed. Now, get your thumb up higher and it, there's no sharp seam right there to annoy That is very cool. This may be second nature to a lot of you, but that is the first time I've ever done that. And uh, disclaimers, I don't recommend you do that. I don't recommend that you try it if you're not a gunsmith or you haven't had experience working on that kind of thing. Um, if I couldn't see in that little hole, I never would have ever figured out what was going on. I'm kind of a visual guy, so hopefully that might help some of you. But I, if you're if you're trying to have a if you're having a hard time doing this, I recommend you call Wilson or you know get to a qualified gunsmith. I disclaim any use of this knowledge to use to do anything whatsoever. <laughs> anyway. Rock on. I'm glad it worked. See you next time. That's cool.